I'm going to own sound tomorrow morning to order that guitar. And the place I was trying to tell you about is Taylor Electronics. And they do sound and lighting the whole gamut. And that's, that's in? In own sound. So if I can remember it, I'll stop in and see if they've got anything as far as cameras and, cameras and that go. Yeah. That's not bad. The only thing is, like, the resolution's good. Maybe your first time in a while. If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired Word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community, and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So, no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out His plan for us. So, welcome to church. Good morning, everyone. It is so good to see you, and a special hello to everybody who's watching live. Uh, this is my buddy John, and uh, he and I concocted a little surprise for everybody this morning. Um, if you uh, if you know what this is from, you're really old. Since you hung around 
welcome back. <laughs> and uh, probably some of the young people back there, like, what was that? <laughs> no idea. All right. Well, I'm going to invite you to stand this morning and uh, let's worship the Lord together.
It is so nice to be together with everybody again. Um, and it's so good to hear your voices and to see your faces. And we hope that you're happy to hear our voices and see our faces. <laughs> um, and we just want to encourage you to worship the Lord with all your heart this morning, despite these restrictions that have been imposed on us. We're still the church. Amen. We can still rise above. Amen. And I want to welcome Amen. Simon and the young people here uh, with us this morning. And it's so good to have you here. Amen.
And I'm sure if we were to give allowance this morning, we could hear all kinds of testimonies of the grace of God in our lives. This is the grace of God that we can meet this morning. Amen. Yes. Amen. There's a lot of other churches that can't do this yet. And we're just, we're just going to continue to pray that God would continue to move in this nation. Yes. That God would eradicate this virus from the yes. face of the earth. Yes. But I think it's time that the church rise up like we never have before. That we Amen. praise him like we never have before. And that we reach out like we never have before. This isn't good news like the song says. It's the best news ever. Amen. <laughs>
Amen. 
Folks, just take a moment. Open up your heart wide. Open it up wide to him. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would come in your own special way and fill us again to overflowing, God, with your presence and with your power and with your fire. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Cry out to him this morning. Hallelujah. Love is the only reality. God is love. God loves every single person on this earth. The most degraded, the most broken. He loves us all. And he loves the poor people who are fallen and broken. God is love. Reality is love. thank you for your presence. Father, we thank you that after three months, we're allowed to gather together again. And Father, we just pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you would just wipe this virus from the face of the earth. That you would do a miracle, Lord God. Like there's this new song out that says, God, do what you're famous for. Do it, Lord. But Father, we want our hearts to be yielded to you like pieces of clay in the hands of the potter, that you would shape us and mold us and make us into the people that you want us to be. Your word says that we're to let our light shine before all. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and hide it under a bowl. But instead it shines bright and it gives light to the whole house. And I pray, Father, that we would be like here in Wingham yes. and here on County. Yes. We thank you, Lord. Thank you. I pray, God, for, for a healing touch, God, on all who are not well today. Will you bless them and keep them and encourage them, Lord? And I pray, I pray Father, that you would get our hearts ready to receive from your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. I'm going to ask that you draw your attention to the screen for this morning's announcements. My name is Pastor Jason, and I'm the lead pastor here at Fresh Wind. These are your announcements for Sunday, June the 14th. Welcome back, church family. We are so excited to once again be able to get together. Just remember that um, for the time being, your personal space is now extended six feet out. So no handshakes or hugs, but smiles are free. <laughs> hey everyone, you can check out our website at freshlandchurch.net. There you can find links to the latest Sunday sermon. You can find our social media accounts through Instagram, Facebook. You can find out all the information related to Fresh Wind Church. We love you and we're here for you. You belong here. One of the ways that we express worship and gratitude to the Lord is through the giving of tithes and offerings. Now that we can meet together, uh, offering plates will not be handed out, but they're going to be set up in the back of the sanctuary area, and you can drop your offering in there. If you're going to be watching online, we encourage you to either mail your tithe and offering here, Fresh Wind Revival Center, 21 Lloyd Street, Wingham, Ontario, N0G2W0, or you can do it by e-transfer uh, and email that to fwrcdonation at gmail.com. Thank you so much for your faithfulness and giving. Hey guys, I'm so excited to finally meet you guys again, and just to remind you, we cannot find five and we're going to have to wait for Kids Church, but we are going to have a Kids Church live on our Facebook page. I'd like to invite you to join my dad for Bible study on Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. Following the Bible study, there will be a Zoom prayer meeting at 7.50. So email this email if you want to be included.
Amen. We have no bloopers this week because it's uh, it's hard to have bloopers when you're close to perfection. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. All right, if you have your uh, Bible with you, I'm going to invite you to go ahead and uh, turn to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Those of you who are watching at home, you can open up your Bible, your device, and follow along. For those who are here, um, we're not allowed to do handouts for the time being, so there's no bulletin and no message notes. I do, however, put them on every Saturday on our website, and you can download them and print them at home. Wink, wink, kink, kink, nudge, nudge. All right? Um, I missed you, and I'm so glad to see you. Um, I, uh, I have shed a lot of tears over these last three months because of your absence and it felt very lonely and I was grateful when the announcement came up this week that we can meet together again although we had to get uh, creative <laughs> about how we do that and I want to thank you all for your uh, cooperation there's a few things that we need to keep in mind as we move forward uh, first and foremost we're continuing to live stream our services when the restrictions were put in place, we had to become a digital church. And I want to thank you for your faithfulness to this assembly, for the number of you that uh, have been watching at home, and I hope that you uh, were able to pick up the stream okay, and that you bear with uh, John and myself and Anna Mika as we work through all the glitches and technical issues, and I think by the time last Sunday rolled around, we finally got it right. So. <laughs> um, but uh, so we have to kind of change our thinking now on church a little bit. We are uh, a church with a physical location, but we're a digital church as well. And we have people watching. So we're going to continue to do that going forward. We're in the process of getting a proper camera to do this. The problem is when the crisis hit, all these churches bought the camera that we're looking for. And they have uh, all sold out. So, uh, with this camera, we will be able to tie into the sound system, and it is specifically designed for live streaming, so uh, we're hoping to get that fairly soon. Uh, we're getting between 300 to 600 views of our services every week. I don't know what, uh, what all of that means, if it's just a click on and check it out and click off, but I do know what the Bible says. The Bible says that God's word will not return back void, right. so we put it out there. Second, you notice the changes here. Joanne and Herb did a fine job yes. yes. uh, updating our sanctuary. It's a, it's a process to, uh, to stay current, you know, and uh, it's fresh life and fresh wind. All right. Um, thirdly, for the foreseeable future, we won't be able to have top blessing luncheons and coffee fellowships after the services until uh, the restrictions are lifted. And it's tough news, okay? It, it's hard to, uh, we've had to adapt to, to, to so much change uh, over the last uh, few months. So let's just rejoice in the fact that we can meet together, and focus on that and on praising our Lord. We're the church, and there is nothing uh, that is going to stop the church from moving forward. Jesus said, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail. And we, we're definitely in prayer with other uh, Bible-believing churches in our community that they will be able to open again soon, and, and that God will be with their people and sustain their people until they do. Romans 13 tells us that we have to submit to the governing authorities. Um, you and I know, both know that's a hard thing to do. <laughs> Um, some of the restrictions that have been put in place I think are a little over the top but I have to follow them and we as a church have to follow them so at the moment we can have 30% uh, of our building's capacity uh, likely in the near future that number will increase we have to maintain physical distancing and I hope that you were able to watch the uh, 
the video that I put out yesterday and that you were able to go on the website to read all of the details. Um, families obviously can sit together. We, we have uh, designated spots for individuals, for couples, for families. Um, so uh, again, we are anticipating that someday in the future, we're gonna be able to remove those signs Amen. and remove those yellow caution tapes and get back to normal. <laughs> Um, but for the time being, please, no handshaking, hugging, or any physical contact of any kind. And uh, to, to use the words of our Prime Minister, try not to speak moistly to each other. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and then finally, uh, we will not be passing the offering plate uh, due to regulations. They are at the back on the tables by the sound booth. You can drop your offering either on your way in or on your way out, okay? So please keep those things in mind. Also, uh, to celebrate communion, we're ordering some special uh, communion emblems because uh, we can't uh, distribute our own emblems here for the time being. So we're getting some stuff shipped in, and it's a, it's a little communion cup that uh, is about the same size as what we're, what we're used to. Pre-filled with grape juice, and on the very top there's a communion wafer, uh, and we'll go through all that. But it will be nice to be able to uh, celebrate communion together again in the future. We had a great board meeting this past week, and um, we started looking towards uh, the future and and uh, some dreams that and and visions vision that God has put in my heart and in my mind that I've shared with them. And, uh, in the fall, there's going to be some small groups and other things starting up, and uh, we're just excited things. So stay tuned, okay? Keep keep all of that in mind. Now, starting today, we're going to begin a series on the gifts of the Holy Spirit, spiritual gifts, and I believe it's going to be an exciting time in God's Word. First Corinthians chapter twelve, verses one to seven. Now, about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters. I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagan, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus, be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them, and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. May God add his blessing today to the reading of his word. During the Great Depression, uh, poverty swept North America like a tornado, uh, ripping up dreams and scattering hopes to the wind, kind of uh, like a little bit like what COVID uh, has done. Uh, I read a true account of a small part of Texas where a man named Yates ran a sheep ranch during the Great Depression. Struggling even to keep food on the table, Yates and his wife did all that they could to survive. Finally, they had to accept a government subsidy or lose their home and their land to the creditors. One day in the midst of the bleakness, a geologic crew from a large oil company came knocking on Yates's door. And with Yates' permission, they wanted to drill uh, a wildcat well on his property, promising him a large portion of the profits if they struck oil. What could I lose, thought Yates, and he signed all of, the, all of the papers. The oil crew immediately set up the machinery and began drilling. 500 feet down, they came up dry. 800 feet they drilled, and they still came up dry. 1,000 feet they drilled, still no oil. Finally, at a little over 1,100 feet, they tapped into one of the richest oil reserves in Texas. The hole sprayed its uh, black wealth, they, they, they would call it black gold, high into the air, and soon the well was pumping 80,000 barrels of oil a day. Overnight, uh, Gates and his family became uh, millionaires. His property, once called Yates Field, became known as Yates Pool. 
And soon now hundreds of oil wells dotted the land where once only the sheep would graze. So here was a man who all along had the potential to make millions, yet in the beginning lived on welfare. Amazing. But if you think about it, many Christians are just like that. We struggle along at the spiritual poverty level, unaware of the vast resources that God has placed in our possession. And out of his bounty, God has given each of us a plentiful reserve in the form of spiritual gifts. And so over the next few weeks, we're going to be drilling into the pool of spiritual gifts to discover their limitless potential to uh, enrich our Christian lives and to build up the church. So I want to begin by talking about three facts about spiritual gifts. A few moments ago, we read from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I just want to share with you three facts about spiritual gifts that stand out in these verses. First of all, the Holy Spirit distributes a variety of gifts. You have a look at verse 4. It says, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit. Simply because one spirit is doing the giving doesn't mean that he has only one gift to give. Remember, folks, the Holy Spirit is part of the Trinity, which means he is God. And that means that his resources are limitless and that his creativity is infinite. And we have to put the, the silly notion out of our minds that we have God all figured out. We don't. The Spirit gives a variety of gifts. And that leads me to the second fact. That because the Spirit gives a variety of gifts, believers can exercise their gifts to accomplish a variety of ministry. Verses 5 and 6, 1 Corinthians 12. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in all men. The variety of gifts has an equal variety of ministries to match. The spiritual gifts don't have to just be operational at a church service. Some can, but there's so many important ministries that match the gifts that the Spirit gives. We're going to look at them in detail uh, over the coming weeks. And then thirdly, when you utilize your gifts, you benefit the body of Christ. You build up the church. Verse 7, Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. All of this wonderful variety converges into one overarching purpose, the common good, the common good of the church. Now adding to this, Paul in his letter to the Ephesians says in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 7 and 8, But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. And this is why it says, when he ascended on high, he led captives in his train and gave gifts to men. So Paul, uh, in that verse, he's quoting from Psalm 68. It says, to each one of us, he gave gifts. To each one. That means that every believer, even on a bad day, has a never-ending reserve of spiritual gifts. Amen. So, what is a spiritual gift? And I want to uh, take a few moments and define what spiritual gifts are. First of all, uh, the original meaning. Simply stated, a spiritual gift is a skill or an ability that enables each Christian to perform a function in the body of Christ with ease and effectiveness. It is given by the Holy Spirit. It is spiritual in kind. And it's something that comes easily. Like adding the missing piece to a puzzle. Any uh, puzzle lovers in, in here today and at home? Yeah. I particularly don't enjoy puzzles. But Neither do I. I'd rather watch things blow up. <laughs> <laughs> Now, when we, when we discover our gifts and then uh, put them into action, the whole body of believers benefits. Consequently, our greatest and, and uh, most effective contribution 
to other Christians. It's not to shake hands. It's not to give them a hug. It is to exercise our spiritual gift. And if we choose not to ex exercise our gifts, we do a huge disservice to the body of Christ. And the word gift is used six times in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It's the Greek word charisma. We get the term charismatic from that word. The root of that word is charis, which means uh, grace. Grace is commonly defined as unmerited favor. God giving us something that we don't deserve. God giving us something that we can't earn. Therefore, we conclude that spiritual gifts are given to us as an unmerited, undeserved gift from God, given to us out of love. And then there's a practical meaning. Acting on our gifts takes a course like Mr. Yates' discovery of oil. There he was, he was sitting on his front porch, contemplating his troubles. Maybe he had a, an old guitar full of holes like Willie Nelson's sitting on his front porch. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. <laughs> Completely unaware that the solution was flowing beneath him. Needed someone else to tap him on the shoulders to say to him, buddy, you're sitting on millions. Once he heard the good news, he needed to drill right away. So the lessons and the truths that we're going to learn from God's word, they're going to tap us on the shoulder and inform us about God's riches underneath the surface in our lives. And so when they do, I want to encourage you as the congregation here at Fresh Wind, to drill a shaft into the pool of spiritual gifts and to begin enjoying the payoff that your spiritual gifts not only brings to your life, but to the life of the church. As Paul encouraged in Timothy, 2 Timothy 1 verse 6, stir up the gift of God which is in you. Stir it up. Those of you who, who uh, like to cook, you know the importance of stirring things up. Amen. Now, what are the critical issues? So I hope you're thinking in your head right now, but I want to know more about what my spiritual gift is. Maybe you have some questions that need answering before uh, you can explore your gift much further. So I want to address some issues, um, the, the questions, and we're going to use the greatest source book available, Word of God. Now, the first question that a lot of people have is, are spiritual gifts and the gifts of the Holy Spirit the same? Uh, they are not the same. Spiritual gifts are far different from the gift of the Holy Spirit. Spiritual gifts are abilities and skills given by the Holy Spirit, while the gift of the Holy Spirit is a person, the third member of the Trinity. And I want us to take a moment to acquaint ourselves with him through the words of Jesus. John 14, verses 16 to 18, it says, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. And then uh, John 14, verse 26, it says, But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. So always loving and mindful of our needs, Jesus and the Father gave us a gift, a gift of their presence in the person of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus assured his followers he would not leave them as orphans. So he graciously provided one who would uh, come beside us to help us live our new lives in Christ. And as the helper, the Holy Spirit plays a very important role concerning spiritual gifts. The second question that people have is, who gives them? Who gives the spiritual gifts? So now that we have the Holy Spirit who is given to us by God, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the Holy Spirit is the one who gives the gifts. Verse 7, 
Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. Verse 11. And all these are the work of one and the same Spirit. He gives them to each one, just as he determines. So the Holy Spirit's distribution of spiritual gifts is just as he determines, not as we determine. This means that we really don't need to pray, plead, or wait for our gifts the Holy Spirit, being God, matches us with our gifts without really any effort on our part. And it is always a perfect fit. The Holy Spirit gives the gifts. But some may consider their Christian life and reflect, oh, I don't feel like I have a special gift from God. Could the Holy Spirit uh, have missed me somehow? <laughs> that brings us to this next question. Is it true that every Christian has at least one gift? And the answer to that question, dogmatically, is yes. Amen. You thought right, my son. <laughs> and if you feel that the Holy Spirit hasn't given you a spiritual gift, it, it just simply means you haven't yet discovered what yours is. But to make the point clear, Paul repeats a crucial phrase in his teaching. We just read these a moment ago. Uh, verse 7, to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given. Verse 11, he gives them to each one. You read through, you get down to verse 18, God has placed each believer in the body and each believer has a gift. And some may have more than one. Question number four. This is the one that's going to keep us busy in this series. What are the available gifts and where can I find them? There's a few passages where we find the list of spiritual gifts. It's not just in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. You're going to notice that some gifts overlap. So in listing them, I'm not going to repeat them. First one is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 8 to 10. Here's the list. Message of wisdom, message of knowledge, faith, healing, miraculous powers, prophecy, Distinguishing between spirits, speaking in different kinds of tongues, and interpretation of tongues. What I've done, if you go on the website and download the message notes, uh, I put each reference there so that you can study these at home, okay? Next group of gifts is listed, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28, without repeating any from the first list. Apostleship, teaching, the gift of helps, the gift of administration. Then the next one is listed for us in Romans chapter 12, verses 6 to 8. Again, without repeating any. The gift of serving, encouragement, giving, leadership, mercy. There's two more. Two more lists. Next one is Ephesians 4, verse 11. Adds to this list evangelism and the gift of pastor. And then 1 Peter 4, verse 11 has one more. The gift of speaking. So if I count that correctly, it totals 21 available spiritual gifts that the Holy Spirit gives to build up the church. Well, I really believe that the, the list is amazing. The possibilities are exciting. And as I mentioned before, every believer has at least one of those, possibly more. And some people ask, is it possible to lose a gift that the Holy Spirit has given to us? If you've ever thought that, I want to put aside your fear right now. Romans 11, verse 29. It says, for God's gifts and his call are irrevocable. Irrevocable. I don't know how you pronounce that word. Even if we are unaware of our gift, even if we fail to exercise it, even if we fall into sin, God's gift and his call are irrevocable. And then question number five, how do I discover which gift is mine? Now, I'm just a small town pastor, and I don't have uh, everything figured out. I don't pretend that the steps I'm going to give you are the end all be all. All right? Here's some suggestions that I can give you to help you discover what your gifts are. Very quickly, five steps. First of all, Explore the possibilities. It's difficult to discover a spiritual gift if you do not know approximately what to look for ahead of time. Become familiar with the, enough with the gifts 
that God ordinarily gives to the body of Christ so that when you come across your gift, you will recognize it for what it is. So over these coming weeks, we're going to put these gifts into three categories uh, to help you understand them better. I'm not going to go through each one and define what they are. If you find yourself identifying with some of them, you make a note of it and then study it for yourself in God's Word. Talk about the gifts with your brothers and sisters in Christ. And it'll all help you get started on the discovery. Second step would be to experiment with the gifts. I like what Ray Stedman once said. You discover a spiritual gift like you discover your natural talents. You would never know if you had a talent for playing guitar if you never picked up a guitar and tried it for yourself. You would never know if you had a talent for writing poems if you had to take it a pen in hand and started to write a poem. You go through them and experiment with some of them. You probably look at the list of gifts and find several right away that are not for you. I can tell you right now, and Elisa will back me up 100% on this, that the gift of administration has not been given to me by God. It's been given to somebody like Marlene. That's okay. I don't need to have the gift of administration. I'll benefit the body with whatever gifts God has given me. When you're trying to discover your gifts, it's just as important to find out which are not your gifts. And every gift you find you do not have reduces the number of options you need to work at for getting the right answer. Thirdly, examine your feelings. I believe that part of God's plan is to match the spiritual gifts he gives us with our temperament in such a way that if we really have a gift, we will feel good using it. It will just feel right. So if in your experimentation with gifts, you don't feel good about doing it, it's a good sign it's not your gift. Two more. Number four, evaluate your effectiveness. Spiritual gifts are task-oriented. So it's not out of order to expect them to work. God is giving you a gift. He's done so because he wants you to use it. He's given you a gift and he has. He wants you to accomplish something for him in context of the body of Christ. So if you experiment with a gift and you consistently find uh, what it is supposed to do does not happen, you probably have discovered that that is not a gift that God has given you. If you have the gift of evangelism, people will regularly come to Christ through your ministry. If you have the gift of encouragement, you're going to help people through their problems and see them straightened out. If you have the gift of healing, you will, you will see uh, sick people get well before your eyes. If you have the gift of administration, the things that you organize will run smoothly. When the gifts of the Spirit are in operation, whatever is supposed to happen is going to happen. You know why? Because they are empowered by the Spirit. And then number five, this one's a biggie. Expect confirmation from the body, from the church. Your gift needs to be confirmed. So if you think you have a spiritual gift and you're trying to exercise it, but no one else in the church thinks you have it, then maybe you don't. Be sensitive to the feedback that you receive from others. Pay attention to the response of others in this process as well as to your own feelings. When you expressed the gift that you were experimenting, did it come easily? Was it enjoyable? Did other people in the church confirm it? Was it effective? So these are steps that you can take in your journey of discovering your spiritual gifts. And you need to know today, right at the onset of this, that our, our first Sunday back, your spiritual gifts will help grow this church. Mm -hmm. And it will help build up the body of Christ. Yeah. I want to bring this to a close. One of the shortest messages I've ever preached, John. <laughs> Amen. There we go. <laughs> yeah, this past Tuesday night at Bible study, I read from Psalm 13, and it kept repeating the phrase, how long, how long, and my dear brother repeated, you know, how long is this study going to be? <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> just a little joke he and I have. <laughs> what difference does it make for me to use my gift? What would happen if I didn't use my gift? I want to leave you with two thoughts. First of all, 
If you leave your gift on the shelf, you will never experience all that the Lord wants to do through you. Say that again. If you leave your gift on the shelf, you will never experience all that the Lord wants to do through you. God created each of you and has filled your lives with incredible purpose. So many people wander around aimlessly. They're lost because they have no direction in their life. They have no purpose in their life. And it's because they're not looking to their creator. You know, if I, if I get a product in, in the mail, I'm hoping to be able to go to the store to buy products again real soon. <laughs> but if I get a product, uh, I don't know how it works until I consult the manual. I need the instructions to put things together. I'm not like uh, Tim the Tool Man Taylor. It, you know, he used to say, real men don't need instructions. Yeah, we do. <laughs> yes, we do. Uh, I don't get to tell my microwave what its purpose is. Only the creator of my microwave gets to do that. And it's the same in our lives. I don't get to determine what my purpose is. Only my creator does. And we are not going to live out the purpose of our lives, folks, if we don't include the Lord in the process. There's a great book out there called uh, Purpose Driven Life uh, by Rick Warren. And if you haven't read that book, you need to order it and get it and read it. It's a 40-day journey that will change your life. You need to ask God, what on earth am I here for? When you find out your purpose, you're going to find out how God has shaped you and how he has placed gifts in you and abilities in you to, to build up the church. And if you just let them sit on the shelf, you're basically saying to God, I don't want you to use me. I don't want to stand before God and have that placed on me. I want him to be able to say, well done, good and faithful servant. That's right. Secondly, you will always wonder is my present life fulfilling God's purpose for me? If you're not working your gifts, you're always going to wonder that. However, if you exercise your gifts regularly, you will never wonder that. You will know what your purpose in the body is. Most people, when they acquaint, when they talk about spiritual gifts, they acquaint them to the sign gifts that take place in church sometimes, like the word of knowledge or a word of prophecy message in tongues and interpretation. That's only three. Those might be a little bit more visible. But what about the other gifts like service, hospitality, helps, encouragement, all equally important. Only by using your gift can you re release the, the marvelous, powerful working of God that awaits you. When this happens, God is going to reveal to you a ministry and a purpose for your life that matches you perfectly. He's God. And he's good at it. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm just going to ask Arlen if she would come back to the keyboard for just a moment. You don't know how long I've been waiting to <laughs> say those words. <laughs> This week, folks, those of you who are watching live, I want you to spend some time seeking God with your Bible open. Uh, look up the passages that I gave you. Write out the list. If you don't want to write out the list, go on YouTube and watch this service and, and pause it when they come up on the screen. They're there. And then begin this process using those steps that I gave you. Today is only part one of six. I think this is going to be a great series for the summer. Get us ready for the fall. And I believe, folks, that God's going to do some good things. And I believe that he wants all of us to get on board. I believe, folks, that there's a massive move of God about to sweep through this nation. Amen. I don't know about you, but I want to be right with the Lord. 
I don't want to miss the boat. I don't want to miss the train. Father, I thank you for your word. It is quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. It goes deeper than any surgeon's scalpel can go as it goes in to perform surgery on our souls. And it changes us and makes us more like Jesus as it is empowered by the Spirit. So Father, I pray that over this summer as we Examine spiritual gifts. We delve deep into this. That you would help us to all discover what our gifts are. If we already know what they are, Father, that we would have this sense of renewal and urgency in us that we have to exercise them and do it regularly. If we have not yet discovered what they are, Holy Spirit, I pray that you would open our minds and our hearts and that we would be in step with you and in tune with you. As you reveal yourself to us through your word. May our ears be attentive. May our minds be open. Father, I thank you. That we were able to meet together today. Father, my heart is full. I thank you for these very fine people and I ask that you bless them. Pray for all those watching today, God, live, that you would please bless them as well. I'm going to ask that everybody keep their heads bowed and their eyes closed. I do this every week. Those who are here or those watching on Facebook right now, the most important decision that we could ever make in our lives is to repent of our sins and to confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and to believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead. You do those things, the Bible says that God makes you a brand new person. It's a decision that you're saying, you know what, God, I'm not going to try to control things anymore. I'm going to yield myself to you and give you full control. It is saying yes to Jesus. We continue to say no to our Creator. We walk through our lives disconnected from Him. And what a shame, what a tragedy that is. When God loves you so much that He sent His only Son to take every sin that we've ever committed, everything that we've ever done wrong, and placed it on the body of Jesus Christ, his son, while he was hung on the cross in agony, bleeding, suffering, and dying for you and me. Amen. He did all the work. All we have to do is say yes. If you're here today, you maybe just want to slip up your hand and say, Pastor Jesus, please pray for me. I want to make Jesus my Lord. If that's you, just slip up your hand real quick. Those of you at home watching, why not today? Everybody repeat this prayer after me. Those of you who are watching at home, repeat this prayer after me. Invite Jesus into your heart. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I know that I'm a sinner. Without you, I have no hope. This day, I turn my back on my sinful ways. And I follow you. And I say today, for the first time, that Jesus Christ is Lord. And I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. Jesus, please forgive me of my sins. Be my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen.
prayed that prayer today for the first time, you meant it with your heart, I want to be the first one to welcome you to the family of God. That means that you uh, gave the angels in heaven a great cause to have a gigantic party this afternoon. The Bible says that there is incredible rejoicing in heaven over one soul that comes into the kingdom of God. And hallelujah. It's so great to be together again today. And uh, we look forward to more restrictions being lifted so that uh, we can get together even, even uh, closer than we are now. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless you folks.